Sally and Gilroy Chow, they were born and raised in Mississippi and are renowned for one of my favorite things in the world, Chinese Cantonese food. But it's a very special Chinese Cantonese food because it has the combination of Southern comfort food or soul food, you, you may call it, and, and traditional Cantonese Chinese food. The Chows are joining me today from their home in Clarksdale, Mississippi. Sally and Gilroy, welcome to Bradshaw Live. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much for having us. Yes, um, it's great. So you are right now, you are in your kitchen, is that correct? We are in the kitchen. Uh, it is the center point of our home because as family and friends gather, we love to eat. <laughs> and as we eat, uh, you know, somebody's got to cook it. The restaurants haven't always been available and then their style of cooking hasn't been the healthiest and the uh, freshest and the style that we uh, enjoy. Now, you have a unique cuisine because you combine Southern style cooking with Cantonese traditional, what you would think of going to a traditional Cantonese Chinese American restaurant. Uh, there's not too many people, if at all, doing this in the world. How did you come to do all of this? How did, did you just make your own unique recipes? Were they handed down from generation to generation? I know you, your family's been in Mississippi for a while. Tell us a little bit about the background of all this. Well, it's a combination of all of the above try to make the dishes and we imitate the things that uh, our parents and uh, their families have created. And then uh, you have to be uh, versatile and adaptable to uh, the ingredients you have in hand. A lot of these things are traditional Southern foods, but then when you put uh, five spice in your pork and your rib, that gives it a Chinese Cantonese flair. You were interviewed on Al Jazeera. You had over 4 million people watch your video. It went viral. Have you written a cookbook, or are these secret recipes that no, that's only going to be handed down to your children? I mean, where do, we, where do we find these recipes where we get that special ingredient to give this special type of Southern Chinese cuisine? There is a museum, a Mississippi Delta Chinese Heritage Museum uh -huh. in Cleveland, Mississippi, just 30 miles south of here on the campus of Delta State University. And we, in collaboration in a consortium with the city of Cleveland, are trying to preserve this heritage. And one of the ways that uh, the heritage is being preserved is in the, in the cooking and, and the recipes. This story could be repeated time and again for families across the Mississippi Delta. You see the picture of Sally's mom, who is the oldest of 10. So that gave Sally 23 first cousins in a small community. Well, they're spread out across the country now. That That is the family uh, in 1922, and there were just eight of them, and that two were yet to be born, but 1922 in Mississippi. So uh, the Chinese have been in the Mississippi Delta for uh, over 100 years. Do you know the history of when your family originally came here? My father came over uh, as a young man and came in through New Orleans. His father, uh, worked on the railroad and uh, spent some time in uh, New Orleans before he went back because my dad was born in China. And so our grandchildren, um, to me, are fourth generation Chinese uh, here in the United States. But uh, I was born here in Mississippi and then Sally was born in Mississippi. In Dublin, Mississippi, the smallest Dublin in the world. It's about 12 miles outside Clarksdale. Our parents came for the opportunity and as far as we know, they were treated well. Gilroy, that's an unusual name for a Chinese. I was named for a man that helped my fa father buy the family farm in the early 1930s in Mississippi. And uh, we were actually born on that farm. My grandfather came at the turn of the century and he made his way down to Marks, Mississippi. And he also purchased land there. He was one of the early settlers in Marks, Mississippi. He had a grocery store. He was very well respected in the community because he always would do what he could to help the community. So now you're both retired. I understand, Gilroy, you, you were a rocket scientist. Is that correct? Well, uh, I did. I spent uh, almost eight years uh, down in Florida at the Space Center uh, working all through the Apollo program. Not that many people uh, got to meet yeah, Apollo astronauts. And, that, and that's one of them we're looking at right now, Buzz Aldrin. Yeah. I understand that you were in the room as one of the engineers 
in one of the most famous times in NASA history when the Apollo, was it the Apollo? The 13. Apollo 13, Astro. right. And it was, they actually made it into a movie and they were stuck in space and they couldn't figure out how to get the Apollo astronauts back. And you were part of that engineering group and Ron Howard made a famous movie about it that was actually able to get the astronauts back and alive back on Earth. Yeah, I was. The team was extremely large, but uh, everybody had their specialty. Now, going back to your cooking, I understand you have a 47-year-old wok. Tell me about this 47-year-old <laughs> wok and what are you doing with it? Well, the reason it's 47 years is because my Uncle John, who cooked for our wedding when we had that huge banquet, he says, you're going to need this. I said, what in the world am I going to do with this? <laughs> but little did I know that it would... Uh, become very helpful and useful in the years to come. Now our children get together and, and they have their friends and their cousins. They'll get together on a Sunday after church and they'll, and they'll cook something that they remember that we had done. Sally, when you go anywhere outside of Mississippi, do you get funny looks when people start hearing you talk? Because it's very rare that you would see a person of Chinese descent with such a thick Southern accent that you have. Do you get like weird looks like, huh, what? Many times we, yeah. we get a smile and um, my son and all of us experience many times people say just say something it's just <laughs> not right that's very uh, funny. Uh, well, I want you to know, I'm looking at all the food here, and I'm actually getting hungry. I really appreciate your time coming on. Uh, Sally and Gilroy Chow, they are, are uh, going basically viral with all of their different Chinese <laughs> recipes, and it's a take of Chinese and Southern cooking, and it's very unusual, and they're getting a lot of accolades for this, and it's, it looks just absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ryan. All right, take care. We wanted them to come here, but I, we was like, well, how are we going to cook in here? <laughs> so we good. sent, um, so we sent a film crew down, yeah, to uh, Clarksdale, Mississippi, to Ooh. the Mississippi Delta, Delta. To the Mississippi nice. Delta, to catch them cooking in action. Let's watch the chows cooking. Hi, I'm Gilroy. This is my wife Sally. We're the chows from Clarksdale, Mississippi. We're here to prepare a southern Chinese meal for you. It's uh, Chinese, but it's southern, and it's strictly home cooking because uh, we're not in the business, but uh, so we get together as friends and family. Uh, we like to eat when we get together, and so we're gonna do a little cooking and a little getting together and just hanging out, and it's gonna be a fun evening. Uh, so just come on in. Well, this evening we're going to have uh, several dishes, homemade, and to start off we're going to have uh, charbroiled roast pork. This is a uh, homemade drum. It's got a hole cut the appropriate size and the pots the appropriate size to hold the charcoal. And um, the ring, as you see, is around the outside and the drippings fall to the side on the bottom, but not into the fire. We marinated it, and then uh, halfway through the uh, process, we've uh, re-basted uh, it with, uh, with the sauce. And you just see how nice that is. And again, you can see the meat pulling off the bones. The sauce that we made, uh, caramelized, it's got a nice sheen to it. We'll also have Delta Southern Fried Rice, and we call it Southern Fried Rice because it has bacon, you know, everything tastes better with bacon, and also ham. This is what's going to make our uh, fried rice a little bit southern, to have some ham in it. Everything is diced, so it's the same texture. Since everything has to happen quickly, you want to um, have everything ready at hand. We cooked the bacon so it's nice and crispy and done, because we don't like floppy bacon. And then we use the oil, and you'll see later how that's used in the dish. Shrimp, peas, Vidalia onion, green onion, celery, ham, bacon, scrambled eggs, bacon fat, and then the rice. We're going to season it with oyster sauce, a little sea salt, black pepper, a little soy sauce, and we like to use canola oil. If you pre-season it, the bottom half is already seasoned. We're cooking on this wok that we've had for 47 years. When we stir fry, we're gonna get a lot of heat and it's gonna cook quickly. And uh, it's the old traditional Chinese wok cooking. And uh, when you get that heat in 
and it, uh, it adds to the flavor and it gives it what they call walk. Hey, we season the pan with a little bit of salt. Uh, we like to use a little garlic, sometimes ginger, depending on the dish, but this one we like, uh, and here you get a nice little sizzle. The bottom of the spatula is the shape of the walk, and so when you scrape, it gets everything. Give it a nice mix. So we've got our ham. This time, uh, since we're coming in with the vegetables, we're gonna give it a little salt. Peas. Celery. Onions, you can just smell the uh, those flavors marrying. We just take our rice that we pre-seasoned and boom. And so we're gonna season with a little bit of oyster sauce. A little bit of pepper. This is where you need the big wok to get a good mix. Break up your big clumps. Here comes the magic ingredient. That's the rending out of the bacon. And the last touch, sesame oil. We do it at the end because if you cook sesame oil, you will lose the flavor. And there we have Fried rice, southern style. There you go, fried rice. There's also going to be black eyed peas with pigtails, which is a traditional New Year's dish that we like to serve. It brings good luck, and of course, everybody wants good luck. So we started the black eyed peas, and it's been cooking maybe an hour or so. And then I'm going to add the magic ingredient, which are pigtails. My girlfriend's husband, Steve, told me, when you're cooking dried beans, do not stir the beans until they're finished cooking because it will tear up the beans. You know, black-eyed peas are traditionally good luck for people at, at New Year's time. And so for Chinese New Year's, we said, well, we could go ahead and use the American version of black-eyed peas and we'll add a little twist to it. And dried black-eyed peas and mini beans, you. Uh, they ask that you, the directions say to soak it overnight in water. And I like to use something with more flavor than water, although water is very healthy for us, that I soak the black eyed peas in chicken broth. And notice I am not stirring it, I'm just letting it simmer in there. These are these the wonderful Vidalia onions from that come at this time of the year. This will probably simmer for about an hour. And then we'll say you have to have a taste of it. And also we're gonna have um, broccoli and chicken stir fry. You know, broccoli is very healthy. Usually in Chinese cooking, you cut up the meat in small pieces so it'll be easy to serve and easy to eat without having to use a knife and fork. So I have this idea about just cooking the meat uh, separately in whole pieces. This way, there's less chance of it becoming dry. So we're flavoring it with a little bit of garlic. Well, and people in the South love pepper. Pan seared, ready for stir fry with broccoli. And we're gonna do the broccoli out here. Bradley's gonna help and Jack's gonna help. Turn it over into the wok. Oh yeah. Yeah, good sizzle. So I like to make my gravy a little bit thick, anticipating that it's going to have more liquid from the veggies. So you gotta keep the, the, um, the broth going, stirring it so that the gravy doesn't lump. Okay, Bradley, I think we can drop that chicken in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, ready for the broccoli. When we blanch the broccoli, I just put a smidgen of soda, baking soda in it to help it retain its bright green color. Okay, I'm gonna put a little oyster sauce. This is one of my favorite ingredients, sesame oil. And we're also going to have shrimp cannonese. It's a very 
special dish. It's traditional for a lot of weddings and birthday parties. Shrimp Cantonese is a gravy-based dish with shrimp, and it has pork and uh, a thick gravy with uh, eggs and and, and uh, garnished with some uh, green onions. But it is served over white rice. So it's shrimp, fresh ground pork, egg, broth, garlic, ginger, and finished with green onion. And what we have here is dried black beans that I soaked earlier. We like to mix it with a little bit of garlic and then a little bit of soy. This uh, garlic and ginger will infuse into the oil. It will flavor everything. So then we'll take the pork. Nice sizzle, that's great. We want the pork to get the, a nice uh, sear to it. This is definitely heat in the kitchen. It's hot summer day in the Delta. See the heat just uh, gives that shrimp a nice red glow. So now we are using the chicken broth. You might think, well it doesn't look quite thick enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to use eggs as a final thickening. And we just stir it, we don't beat it. Then all we need to do is just finish it with our green onion and give it that nice green color. We go with our yellow and white and the pink from the shrimp. We put the sesame in at the end. Fold that in. That's uh, shrimp Cantonese. And for dessert, we're going to have Aunt Wanda's sponge cake. And then we're going to serve it with my Aunt Jean's topping, crunch heat bars. In our kitchen, there's always room for artistic compression. So sometimes she does a little bit differently than I do, and sometimes I'll do it a little bit differently than she does. We have a lot of fun in the kitchen, and it's time we get to spend together. All this cooking has gone for naught if we don't eat it and enjoy it. So uh, we're here together, uh, Sally and Gilroy, and we have our friends Ray and Rob Rancy, all the way from Australia. You get the prize for coming the furthest because uh, Bradley, Jennifer, Jack, and Emily came all the way from Germantown, Tennessee. And so uh, we're welcoming everybody here and we hope that everybody enjoys the meal.